Wait, it, the cats met a dog yesterday. Yeah, I saw a dog escape into your yard. Yeah, we had friends. They have a little, his name is Tyrion Lannispaw. Really? Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Flag on the play. They named their dog Tyrion Lannispaw. Yes. He he also has a, a scar across his nose. He does, from so. their cats. So he has the proper face scar for that job. For that name, rather. Um, but he's he's actually smaller than our cats. He's a mm. Dachshund Chihuahua mix. And he's the cute and he they don't have a big yard, so he was just having the time of his life just running around our yard. Dottie was just under the couch all day. She was like, fuck this shit. Uh, I will see you when shit's normal. Peggy? <laughs> Peggy was like really <clears throat> curious about Tyrion. So she'd get, but every time she'd get within three feet, he would move and then she'd hiss and back off. Like, I didn't even know Peggy could hiss, but we heard a lot of it yesterday. She was not a fan of him. That, that That's cat for get the hence foul beast. Yes. It's funny though, because she, she was curious about him. Like she wanted to check him out, but then he would make a sudden movement and she was like, nah, fuck that. Like you were interesting until you did that thing. And then he started to bark and they were both just like, hell no. So. Maybe they were just very concerned that he was very bad at being a cat. Yeah. Well, that's what they, they have two cats that they had before they got Tyrion. And they say that they, they're pretty sure their cats think of him as a really dumb, weird cat. That eats their poop. Because they were like, where's yeah. the litter box? Because we're going to have to keep them away from it. Well, we've got... Oh, oh we got shit that's just going to... We're starting with the sad stuff. I hate this shit. Sad stuff? That's that's not our oeuvre. Well, it's not... It's just... it's Well, it's douchebags. Oh, but that's our oeuvre. That's our oeuvre. Let's get the intro going. God damn it. This is not, it's not a good week to be a kid this week. I'm going to say that. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of cool stuff, bring it back here for a little something we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with Crazy. All right, but let's, I, first of all, I'm amazed we're getting a story this week from the Washington Post. Oh. And second of all, do you remember the well, not remember. This is the big complaint these days. You they gave kids participation trophies when we were all little and now we're all ruined. Which we did not ask for. No, they, it wasn't they, our idea. It was our parents' idea. Well so it's our fault now. Well, that that idea seems to have evolved in horrible, despicable ways. Oh my God! I know where we're going. You know I'm exactly where we're going. Pretty angry about it. Yeah. yeah. Texas teacher gives most likely to become terrorist award to thirteen-year-old. And that's not the only bad award. Oh, I don't no. know if it lists some of the other ones. There's some other ones. Uh, seventh grader Lizeth Villanueva. Did I say that right? Villanueva. Villanueva, thank you. Has been in her school's academic honor program for two years. She gets good grades, never been a discipline problem, yet on Tuesday, her teacher gave her a most likely to become a terrorist award. It's supposed to be a joke, part of a mock end of the year award ceremony at Anthony McGuire uh, Junior High in Channel View, Texas, near Houston, where a group of teachers hands their tickets to students. Lizeth, 13, said her teacher just laughed when she signed and handed her the certificate one day after the Manchester Arena terrorist attack in Britain. Like, that's fine, right? That's not the age group that happens to like the concert that was bombed or anything. She said two honors classes were brought together for the fake ceremony. Other awards included most likely to cry for every little thing, given to a girl, and most likely to become homeless that was presented to a boy. Okay. There was another one. The mother took a picture of her litter girl holding it up. They gave this little black girl an award for most likely to blend in with white people. In Texas. Again, another reason not to go to Texas. We're compiling a list of reasons not to go to Texas. 
I, I just... Sweet God almighty. Like, you're a fucking educator. Presumably, you have studied some level of child psychology you know how fucking fragile preteens and teens are it, i'd like to say you just know how to not be a dick but clearly you don't and just and while while we're on this the the, the most likely to become homeless let's put aside the terrorist one let's put aside the most likely to blend in with white people Let's just start at the rock bottom of the awful yeah. stuff and move our way up the ladder of horrors. Most le least likely to succeed. Most likely to become homeless. Yeah. Have these teachers just embraced the horror at this point? They're just like giving in to sheer nihilism. They're like, well, if 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 we have to teach evolution. It was, like, it was like the world's fucked up. You kids are all yeah. fucked. Just fuck go it. with it. Yeah, fuck it. And independence uh, Channel View Independent. They've gone with the District. Life Is Pain Princess curriculum this year. Channel View Independent School District spokesman Mark Kramer told KPRC the awards were quote a poor attempt to poke fun and it wasn't well thought out. And the No that, Shit Award goes that to... That is a wonderful understatement. I I just... it. First of all, like, I joke around with my nieces and nephews. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't joke around with kids, but if you're their teacher, maybe poking fun shouldn't be an activity you put a lot of work into. Yeah, seriously. Like, you can joke around with kids, but, like... They're fragile at that age, and you're their teacher. You're supposed to be somebody they can trust. Maybe don't just outright fuck with them. Speaking of fucking with kids... What are you doing over there? Sorry. Let's, let's go even younger, shall we? Oh, God. Not to be outdone, there was a uh, someone in uh, Florida. Florida, everybody drink. Fucked with two and three year olds. This asshole. Tots trapped in bounce house after neighbor unplugs it. Oh no. Yeah, that's fucking terrifying being in one of those things when it deflates. That's really scary. It feels like it's eating you. And I, who wrote this fucking story? I'm not seeing a byline here. No one's taking credit for it. But that first line of the story. Oh. Of, I gotta get the right voice for it. I gotta get the right voice for it. The Florida family was left with quite the deflated feeling after a neighbor was caught on video pulling the plug on a bounce house at a birthday party for a young child. No. Who wrote this shit? That's bad, and you should feel that. Police released footage from a outside a Port St. Lucie home on Sunday showing a man walk into the backyard, unplugging the attraction, and then walking back across the street. Nearly a dozen kids between the ages of two and three were inside as the house started to fall on them. All were rescued by parents and adults. That's literally a nightmare. Like, imagine you're that small, and you don't really understand how these things work. As far as you're concerned, they're fucking magic. Harry Potter builds these things, as far as you know. And you're inside there jumping around, everything's great. Oh. And then it starts to collapse. And you can't find the exit, and you can't right. find mom and dad. I mean, but that's a literal waking nightmare. I mean, for fuck's sakes, you're two years old. You've just mastered not pooping in your own pants. Maybe. Maybe. And you don't have deductive reasoning yet. You can't really say multisyllabic words. And just, police believe the man was trying to pull the plug to the DJ booth at the party instead of the bounce house. Oh, well. Here's an idea. Maybe don't roll into a party you weren't invited to and pull the plug on anything. Right. Okay. Let, Maybe let's... just keep your fucking mitts off of other people's shit. Yeah. And if yeah. they're too loud... Maybe say, hey, listen, I'm trying to watch Matlock. Could you maybe turn down 
the Mambo number five. I mean, you, you there are two two steps to a noise complaint. Okay? If you live in a neighborhood, and I live in a neighborhood, I have neighbors on either side of me, and sometimes they get a little loud. The first step is you walk your ass over, you knock on the door, you very politely ask them, look, could could you turn the noise down just a little Emphasis bit? Emphasis on the very politely. Very politely. You, you ask do not bring your gun. No. You just very, could you please turn the noise down a little bit? I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. The second step is if they do not comply with your very polite request, you call law enforcement. They right. will drive by and give a more sternly worded request to turn the noise down. At no point. Do you take it upon yourself to turn the noise down? No. This is you don't a... just start unplugging their shit. I mean, you don't just start unplugging random shit. What if that was grandma's oxygen, you <laughs> fuck? Well, the noise is still going, but where are all these screams of terror coming from? Yeah, it's louder now. <laughs> and now there's a siren. This fucking asshole. Don't just pull random plugs. This fucking Especially asshole. Especially Florida. It's heaven's waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> or, alternately, you could blow up their meth lab. You don't know what you're unplugging. It's <laughs> Oh, well, oxygen is sometimes my dad was on oxygen and the big mine too. There's a portable one that you can carry with you that'll last you a couple of hours. But the big mm -hmm. unit does plug into the wall. Yes. <laughs> Luckily, my dad was almost stone deaf by the time he was on it. So he didn't notice that lovely noise. I did. But I hate the I yeah. hate I hated the oxygen compressor. That thing was annoying. Oh, don't smoke, kids. Don't fucking smoke. Bad don't smoke. Break. All right, let's let's move back into our wheelhouse where just what the fuck are you thinking? Okay. If you are ever in an instance where you are get to be involved in a threesome, where everyone's consensual, where it's 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 one of those that that's one of those moments in your life where it's just like, hey, this is cool. Let's roll with it. However, this is going to fall under the heading of Time and a place. But be careful when you're rolling, because there's three people. Yeah, that's true. You could push somebody right out of the bed. Well, they weren't using a bed. Co-workers nabbed for threesome. Trio caught in act on restaurant deck. Oh. Two women and a man are facing indecent exposure charges after they were caught engaging in a threesome in broad daylight on the deck of a Mississippi restaurant. So presumably the restaurant was open? No, it was not. Okay. The owner of Triple D's Landing in a Kiln uh, called police Wednesday. Triple so you got to read landing. that random parenthetical non sequitur. Yeah. Uh, called police Wednesday after home of NFL legend Brett Favre. Was Brett Favre in the threesome? Otherwise, who cares? <laughs> who fucking cares? Adding the word count, kids. Uh. <laughs> Police discovered the Troika, really? Calling him a Troika? Having sex on the eatery's deck, which overlooks a small river. The restaurant was closed at the time. Interview at the Sun Herald newspaper, uh, Sheriff Ricky Adams said the trio engaged in sexual activity, quote, in the middle of the day, in broad daylight, in front of God and everybody. Adam added, I'd hate to have to tell mama and daddy I got arrested for such as that. Here's a turn of phrase I've never understood. In front of God and everybody. <laughs> if you're a religious person. Everything. Everything you do is in front of God. Yeah. Literally everything. God can see you pooping. God. God can see you vomit when you're drunk. God can see you every time you fuck. God can see you talking to yourself. Every God can see you pick your nose. God can see you try to take the health care from, uh, from the poor. Yes, he he's, can. He's like, watching literally you, every, So I've never understood that phrase, in front of God and everybody. Because every time you fuck, it's in front of God. Every time. But, and he's laughing at the faces that you make. Upon arriving at Triple D's, I, I got the, what an aptly named restaurant. Yeah. Upon arriving at Triple D's, a sheriff's deputy spotted the man and one of the women having sex. Investigators subsequently arrested Amy Hammers, 19-year-old Louisian, Tiffany Thibodeau, a 26-year-old Biloxi resident, 
and Texan Brandon Mayberry, 30, for indecent exposure. Okay, these are three people. Amy Hammers, though. Amy Hammers, yeah. That's a porn, that's a porn star it, name. Like, your daughter was always going to wind up in a public threesome one way or the other. Yeah, so three people from three completely different states came together. Well, we don't know if they did or they didn't, but they, they joined together to fuck at a closed restaurant out on the public deck. Like, did they work there? No? It, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't really... Like, did they order food? <laughs> well, how did, how did they wind up here? I don't know. This is so weird. Like, what's the shitty porn movie plot for how they wound up here? <laughs> It's not like, a, yeah, I know. It, the the plausibility is just gone. I'm thinking two of them are a couple and they had lunch there and the service was really bad. And the waitress's punishment for that is she wanted her tip. I should write porn. You should. I, I just, the, there's nothing wrong. If everyone's consenting adult, everybody's legal and everybody's okay with it, there is nothing wrong with the threesome. Just yeah. don't, just Go inside. Go inside. Get a, get a hotel room. Go yeah. home. Don't break into a restaurant when it's closed to fuck. Also, I'm looking at that deck, and all of those tables are wood, which yes. means at least one of them has a splinter in a very uncomfortable place. Yes, that that uh, that is a wooden deck with wooden tables. Just You all... really want to put your nooks and crannies all over those gnarly-looking wooden tables? No. No. Mm -hmm. That's an unsanitary clip piercing that you did not ask for. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, oh, God damn it. I don't even have one. And I'm sitting here going, I, yeah. Welcome uh. to the first day of the rest of your infection. Oh. Uh. So apparently there's someone in the chat who knows someone in the story. What? No shit. Really? Are you kidding me? What? Are you kidding oh. me with this shit? Who know who knows who, who knows one of them? I'm trying to scroll up. Uh Silver Kappa. Silver Kappa, where are you? Oh my god, it finally happened. Oh, he went to high school with one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That person probably got the most likely to have a public threesome. <laughs> that magical day has finally arrived. Oh! <laughs> I feel like I feel like we should have some kind of award for Silver Kappa. <laughs> I feel like you should get a little certificate or a gold star or something. Yeah. yeah. Well done. You know an imbecile. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh well. Let's move on to uh, Iraq and Kuwait, of all places. This, this is, this, there are, obviously, it's still a very violent area. There, there's still issues with, with uh, different factions and our own military and all these other, especially the drug trade. So they're having to get creative with the smuggling. This is one of the most creative ways I've seen to smuggle drugs ever. I think the, the most we've ever seen on this show. I'm almost impressed with these guys because, wow. Pigeon busted smuggling drugs yeah. in tiny backpack. Would you look at that? It's so cute. And it's horrific. It's so same. horrible. Kuwaiti Customs tracked the homing pigeon attempting to cross the border from Iraq and managed to capture the trafficker. Attached to its back was a bag with 178 ecstasy pills. The word on the possible sentence facing the DEA bird. This, this poor bird! This, this poor bird! Well, I mean... I don't think the bird was hurt. No, the bird bird wasn't hurt. It's just all of a sudden now all these humans are really, really interested in it. I know. It's like, what, unless you have breadcrumbs, fuck off. 
that's not what a bird wants to be doing with its day is is being manhandled no. by humans and shit. No. But I you know, it's ingenious. Yeah, kind of. And weird as hell. I mean, pigeons have been known to carry things to a specific destination. They're very easy to train for that. Dang. What? Dang. What? Dang. What? I got an idea. What? What if, stay with me, stay with me. What if we get a pigeon, right? We get a pigeon. And I sew a tiny little backpack for the pigeon. <laughs> and we put the drugs in the pigeon backpack. Have you been using the drugs? Yes! I'm trying to picture how this would go in New York City, where there's approximately <laughs> 4 billion pigeons. <laughs> like, how would you know which of those 4 billion pigeons was your... Pigeon. Fuck's sake, in New York City, the pigeon would just take the backpack off and sell the drugs himself. True. Uh. <laughs> you have junkies running down Fifth Avenue <laughs> trying to get a hit. The pigeon population would just disappear overnight. They'd be like, fuck this shit, I'm not going anywhere near New York. That would solve New York's pigeon problem. Holy shit, They'd yes it would. Like, no, fuck you, I'm out. I can't take any more Wall Street douchebags. <laughs> trying to snort about Molly. <laughs> you see people grabbing pigeons and trying to snort them. Shit would get the weird. Pigeons would finally know what it's like to have an annoying species constantly bothering you for ingestibles. Ah, uh, ah. Uh -huh. Be like, yeah, you know what? This does stuff. We're leaving. Oh, hey, this one comes from your neck of the woods. Uh oh, New Jersey. <clears throat> So, um, oh dear. now that I've got the uh, TV antenna hooked up again, I've been watching uh, some regular programming and seeing commercials, which they're all lies. All TV commercials are lies. It's, it's just, it's frustrating how much lie they are. And, um, not those ones about how they can fix your credit. Those people are completely on the level and you should give them all your money <laughs> if you want to tank your life. But, uh, th th I've seen advertisements for laxatives but i think this is the most effective laxative advertisement i've ever seen new jersey emergency uh, alert system accidentally activates sends nuclear warning to some televisions the minute you see that you will shit yourself well i'm really glad we missed that yeah huh, stop it shut up shut up a false alarm that went out to some people's television sets Tuesday might have scared some in New Jersey. Might have? Might have. A nuclear power plant issued a warning in Cumberland and Salem counties was sent out by mistake. A message was sent out that said, quote, a civil authority has issued a nuclear power plant warning for the following counties areas. Short time later, New Jersey Office of Emergency Management tweeted that the emergency alert was false said the message went out in error. So, I've mentioned before, but yeah. tell them what you did in the Army, Dan. Uh, I was a nuclear, biological, and chemical specialist, so I dealt with bugs and gas and This radiation. is literally his nightmare. Yeah. Like, if that warning honestly came up on our TV, he'd be like, pack your bags, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. You would be, like, halfway to, like, Oregon. Like, he's explained to me how you know whether you should drive away from the mushroom cloud or towards it by how far you are and whether you're better off just blowing up instead of dying of the cancer. Like, he, he knows just enough to be terrified all the time <laughs> and to terrify me. So I'm really glad we don't watch local news because we like we tend to watch a lot of CNN because if we'd seen this, we would be in Montana right now. <laughs> we'd have packed the cats in the car and run the fuck for it. Dig the fallout shelter another another twenty feet deeper. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah, Dan, Dan is officially my apocalypse survival plan because he knows what to do in bad shit situations, and I I hide under the bed. So how did this? Fight? Well, that's why we have the cat stroller, so we can wander through the apocalypse with the cats and the cat stroller. Yeah. How the fuck did this happen? That's bad. 
this is this is a great big oopsie yeah that's that that's not something you can fuck around with man because if you if you set it off once and everybody goes false alarm well the next time it goes off when it's really for real we're gonna wait to be told it was a false alarm that's true i can pack festering wounds you can yeah you've had to hi dotty hi dotty you hear the faint jingle of dotty i do let's see if i can get her close enough to grab her oh yeah pointing people are pointing out why was it only a warning for an hour <laughs> yeah it's it's uh it, and why it, only part of the state new jersey's not a big state if there's a nuclear thing whole state needs to know yeah at, at I mean, 8 45 p.m effective until 9 54 p.m oh come here they haven't seen you in so long hi what what do she I? she looks so man mad what what the fuck am I supposed to do now? <laughs> she looked mad. She looks mad. I like mad. how when she gets mad, she looks like the evil owl from Twin Peaks. Doesn't she? Her ears she look too like big. She's gonna turn into Bob at any minute. Her ears too big. I love you. All right, all right, all right. Don't kick me. And finally, this week, you know what? Fuck this guy. Especially since my girlfriend just had to fly, and I was. She hadn't flown in many years, and I was kind of concerned about her. So when people do shit like, fuck, fuck you. Fuck, fuck, fuck all of you. Man jumps off American Airlines jet onto tarmac after trying to bite flight attendant. What? Pastor on American Airlines set to take off Thursday, jumped onto the tarmac. And that's a good, what, 20-foot drop? Yeah. Oh, you have your soaking wet head from the fountain. That's nice. Dottie hasn't really mastered the fountain yet. Jumped onto the tarmac after trying to bite a flight attendant. Uh, I think I'm saying this right. Uh, Tunlon Sain? 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 It threw up a thing telling me I have to subscribe or I can't read it, so. What? I'm really? flying blind. Uh, Tunlon Sign, 22, was arrested on a charge of interference with flight crew members and attendants. American Airlines Flight 5242 had pulled away from the gate at Charlotte Douglas International Airport, was preparing a taxi to the runway for a half-hour flight to New Bern, North Carolina. According to a criminal complaint, Sign got out of his seat, tried to open the plane's main door. Flight attendant got up and told him to go back to his seat, and two passengers also tried to help. Sign attempted to bite the flight attendant, opened the galley service door, and jumped onto the tarmac. Two airport workers were able to prevent sign from going onto the taxiway, staying to a hospital for evaluation before being booked into the county jail. Which means if they take you to the hospital and they say you're not out of your mind and then they take you to jail, it was your own damn fault. Yes. You ain't crazy. You're just an asshole. And as, as they eloquently put it in American Gods, do not fuck with those bitches at the airport. <laughs> Mathson's in the channel says, I left the oven on! They, they don't, don't fuck with the airline system, man. They will no. literally beat your face in and drag you off the plane for goddamn nothing. Yeah. Well, just not, not only that, it's when something like this happens, Everything stops. Every yes. they hit the pause button on every goddamn thing. Your plane isn't going anywhere. The people on your flight are not able to get off the plane nope. because that shit ain't moving. You um, ruined everybody's day. The planes behind you ain't going nowhere. Your gate is fucked up because the schedule is big. They 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 stack the schedule. So if you yep. knock down one thing, it's like dominoes. Every we were flying back from, I think, Florida, and we'd already got, we whizzed through security and we're waiting at the terminal, waiting at the oh, gate, yeah. and they evacuated the terminal. The sirens went off, and like, we asked someone at TSA, we're like, is that, is that a false alarm? And they're like, no, you have to evacuate. So we went out and we had to walk all the way around the terminal and sit out there for I don't know how long. And then we all had to go through security. So now security's bottlenecked. Because everybody who was in that terminal has to go through security again. Why? 
somebody didn't feel like waiting in line for security and just whizzed past through the employee entrance. Whole terminal went on lockdown. It's not like jumping the turnstile in the subway, motherfucker. No. Shut down every fucking thing. It, we were lucky that we got there kind of absurdly early, so we still had plenty of time with our flight. I don't know if people missed flights over this. I assume some people did because we were outside for a good half hour and then had to get through security again in a fucking gridlock because someone thought they were more important than everybody else and shouldn't have to get screened. And if you want to, if you want a, a, an idea of how serious they're taking this shit, he faces a sentence of up to 20 years in federal prison if convicted. Yeah. They, they don't fuck around. You, you do not get to just open doors on an airplane and jump out. You what, did, what was it like? You know what? I've changed my mind. Maybe I'll just drive. Yeah. Maybe I'll just. I, I don't I don't want to fly today. You can't do that. No. It's, it's too late. late. Oh. Uh, you fuck it. And, and you are now hated. Hated. By everyone on that plane. Hated. They're all sending very bad energy your way. It just... And can you imagine the people at the fucking uh, terminal looking out? They're like, when's my plane going to get here? What's gonna... Okay, that's what different. I know, you know how you let your kids look out the window? Like, look, honey, that's our plane. Door opens and guy jumps the fuck out. <laughs> 20... And this is not a short drop. That is, that is a, what, a story and a half? That's, that's yeah. a long fucking drop. That's going to fuck up your knees pretty bad. Yeah gonna fuck up your everything especially the 20 years in jail that's gonna fuck up and you're falling onto concrete like it's not like you're falling onto a fucking cushion can you hear this oh grady human love me grady human i require attention i'll what i'll do is i get up and i go over there to pet him and he runs the fuck away that's the game that's the kind of attention he wants. Well, guess what? He wins. I'm, the, I'm, I'm, no, I'm. He doesn't win until you chase him. Well, that's not happening. But the girls have a new game that we have this toy called the bird. <clears throat> yeah. You, you're aware of the bird? Yes. It looks like a fishing pole toy, but on the end is basically like a giant fishing fly with feathers. <laughs> oh, human. Human. But it's like on a hinge, so it flies like a real bird, like it turns and everything. Cats go insane for this. We've had to buy refills because they've shredded three of the things already. We keep it up on the mantle on the fireplace. And they don't care about it all day. All day they don't care. The second Dan's ass cheeks hit the couch, all of a sudden we have to like sit on the arm of the couch and try to move the bird with our mind. <laughs> Well, daddy notices and comes over and plays with them. We have to jump on the fireplace to try and get it. And Dottie just likes to sit on a tower and stare at it really hard like she's trying to enact her Jean Grey mutant powers until Dan gets up and plays with them. And then they try to grab it and run off with it. Yeah! <laughs> like, they, they get the feathers in their mouth and then they're like, okay, gotta go, and they take off. And one of two things happens. Either Dan plays along and walks the cat around the house a bit. Or Dottie gets away, gets it out of his hand and runs off until the stick hits the wood floor, in which case she gets terrified and runs away and leaves it behind. I, but yeah, they don't give a fuck I, about it until Dan sits down. I'm I'm being assaulted right now. Oh, man. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Little shit. Dan sits on the couch naked. Yeah, he gives our neighbors the helicopter dick in the front window every day. Nice, nice. So the first thing we learned, I do it keeps him in line. Yeah, the the, the first he mows, he mows the lawn naked in just a gimp mask. It's good for property values. Uh the first thing we learned this week is don't fuck with them bitches at the airport. Yeah, don't fuck with those bitches in the airport. Um, or anybody else. Yeah, just the airport sucks for everybody. Just get in and get out, just like the rest of us. Deal yeah. with it and move on. We've learned, you know what? You might want to confirm those emergency alerts. And also, sometimes when you're watching TV, keep a spare pair of pants handy. Yeah. 
We've learned drug smugglers are ridiculously ingenious in the most insane ways. I'm also now picturing that these birds were like the good feathers. <laughs> and there are no human smugglers. This is their own hustle. Animaniacs got dark, man. <laughs> They're actually running a little fucking mafia. I, I I don't think I don't think that the Godfather would be good with that. That's gonna be that's gonna be in a Zack Snyder reboot. I told you, no drugs, no kids, no drugs, no kids. I mean the Zack Snyder reboot. We've it's learned, considered. we've learned that a threesome is perfectly natural if everyone involved is a consenting adult. However, inside, that's stay an inside, inside sport. That's an inside game, okay? Football is an outside game. Three-way fucking is an inside game. Okay, we no all clear. What Jonathan Colton says. Yeah, yeah. First of May, it's not. It's not a how-to. Mm -mm. That's what we call bad advice. We've learned if your neighbors are being noisy, do not take it upon yourself to silence them. Mm -mm. That shit is not yours. It. You learn this shit in fucking kindergarten. Don't touch other people. Stop. How do you how do you fail that for fuck? Mike says the helicopter dick keeps the Jehovah's Witnesses away. <laughs> well, it's oh, I know all about the Watchtower. Want to see it? It's kind of hard to talk to somebody about the Lord and Savior when you're hypnotized by a spinning scrotum. It's true. And finally, we've learned. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes South Park's not a good guide for how to deal with children. No. Aha, it's funny because we're destroying your self-esteem. Like, the world is hard enough for kids right now. Like, all the joy has been sucked out of childhood because you can't do anything anymore. Hard enough for kids? The world is hurtling toward death. Mm. Like, let's not make it any harder. Fuck the Their world. hormones are raging. Fuck the kids. The world's hard enough for me. 